Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, she is, take a deep breath, 2020 Olympian for Canada, a 2019 ISL champ with Energy Standard, four-time Pan American medalist, three-time world championship, sorry, world junior championship medalist, uh, and an all-around Energy Standard stalwart. She's been on Energy Standard for all three seasons of ISL, just wrapped the regular season with them in Naples, Italy today. We have the pleasure of sitting down with Mary Sophie Harvey. Hi. for coming on the pod you're in your home of montreal you're back from naples how's it how's it feeling are you are you are you feeling the jet lag or doing um, okay it's not too bad i actually just got home like yesterday my uh, yeah so um not too bad a bit jet clad this morning i woke up i think at like six in the morning and i was like okay i'm ready to start the day so a bit jet lag but I'm, i think i'm still like a bit overwhelmed with like eyes on and stuff i'm still on the little cloud so yeah, I'm already excited for Eindhoven, which is kind of crazy because we just race a lot. But I'm like, yeah. it was so much fun that I'm just like already looking forward to the semi and the final. So yeah, exciting stuff. Dude, I can I can imagine. I didn't even think about that part of it. But, um, you know, you you are coming off your first Olympics, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But yeah. is, is, there, is there a come down from ISL as well, even though, you know, in a month you're going to be back racing with the team again? I know the the thing is like with there's like it's really different I guess like the Olympics and like ISL but like in ISL I have like so much fun because you don't have time to think about being nervous because you just do races back to back to back and I was just like taking it one at a time each matches and it's just like so much fun to like try to get points for your team you're not actually racing for yourself you're racing for the team and you just want to make good for them and it's just like it's a different vibe and I really enjoy it and I feel like yeah it's the whole month I was like okay I want to be better like each match I was like trying to improve and get more points for them and stuff and it was nice to actually see the result I was working for and to see like pretty much everyone on our theme on our team I think was like better each match so it was nice to see improvement even though like we own we were there for like a month or so. Yeah. I, I, I want to get into that, uh, this ISL regular season, because from the outside looking in, you were, you were one of the stars on energy standard, you know, you, you won your first individual event, I, I believe in, in your ISL career. And, yeah. uh, yeah. And I mean, you were just a star in the backstrokes, you were in the IMs as well. So coming into this third season, um, do you feel like you had leveled up from previous seasons, especially just knowing what to expect in the ISL, this being your third season? Um, yeah, well, definitely. I think like, it's like every season for me was so different. So like the first season, uh, I think like my best place was like third in the 4am or something. And for pretty much the whole races, like all the races I was doing was like sixth place pretty much. And I was doing like 4 a.m., 400 free, 200 fly. I was going to get to this. Your, your season yeah. one lineup was just grueling. I know. I did like, all. I think at uh, one point I did like the most, like the swimmer that did the most mileage. And I was like, yeah. okay, that's a lot. In the but, whole league. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I was doing like all these crazy races and I was doing well, but not like being a superstar in any of them, but I, I was still making points. So like, that was good for the team. Like when we were having weaker events, I could like do some of them and try to get some little points that we were missing out on. And then like the second season, well, I remember like the first season, I kept bugging them to put me on the relay at the four by one free. <laughs> and I was like, please, please. I'm sure I can do like some good hundreds and like some good. <laughs> They're like, we're going to keep you in the four hundreds, And then, <laughs> the second season happened and then they were like we're gonna try you on the relay and then I was like so excited and then they got I think they were surprised at how well I did in the four by one free and I was surprised as well I was like I just wanted to do it 
So I think <laughs> I just we, wanted to not swim a 400 IM yeah. one time. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, yeah, I could do the 4 IM, but I'd rather do like shorter distance. And um, yeah, well, the first match I think was pretty bad, but I improved a lot like throughout the second season. So like the final <laughs> was my best, my best match there. And um, it was hard because like first match, I remember the first race was 200 back and I got uh, minus points because I didn't meet the time requirement. So it was a lot of work. It was really hard. It was like a slap in the face. I was like, okay, I'm not really in shape. But then every race and every practice, I was like, okay, hey, just try to improve, try to be better, like improve yourself from where you were the day before. And that was just like my focus. And I was like, improving in that way so like every match I was getting better and better till the final where I actually like did my best results in the season two and um third season I was like I don't know how that's gonna go because I took like a 10-day break after Tokyo so I was like oh we'll see I'm just gonna have fun and see how it goes and then I really surprised myself in the first match uh being like super close to my best times and yeah I was just trying to do the same strategy I did in the second season. So basically try to not get overwhelmed by the whole thing and just try to improve myself and work on some details to get better and better at each races and each match. And it worked well. So, yeah. So, so this season, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but your event lineup, certainly a big shift from season one. Yeah. Um, you were in 50 back, you're in backstrokes, 50, 100, 200, 200 yeah. IM. 100 IM. Were, were there yeah. any other events in there? Uh, the first match, I got to do two fly and two free. I didn't want it to do two fly because I was like, no, I'm retiring for this two fly. <laughs> but I did it uh, the first match. And then I would have done the two free more, but I was doing skins. So I had to pull that event off. And that's the, old, that's the other thing. On the second season, after I did the relay, I kept bugging them to do the skins. And then I had to wait this year, but I finally did it twice. <laughs> so yeah, that was fun too. What? Yeah. Was it backstroke both times? Yes. <laughs> what do you think of them? <laughs> um, okay. So from someone who hadn't done skins prior to this season, I was like, okay, 350s like it's fine like you do this in right. practice all the time like I can be good at it it's fine first 50 chill walk in a park and then you're like okay I can do the second one and then when you touch at the wall on the second 50 Jesus Christ I was not ready for that <laughs> Siobhan told me she was like oh like you'll feel like after the second 50 the third one your legs are gonna hurt and I was like sure it's fine yeah she was right it is painful it is a hard event I have more respect for people at the skins now like I'm really impressed like Sarah at the end I remember after the first one I was like you need to teach me how you can do three and be so quick because <laughs> this is impressive but yeah it was still super fun to do and I was like really happy that I got through the three rounds on the first one and then two rounds on the second one. So that was good. Did, did, did Sarah give you any, any wisdom or any skins advice? I mean, cause she's obviously the master. I know. Well, she, she told me, she was like, you just need to chill on the first one. And then I was like, well, in backstroke, you can't really see where you're at. Cause you're basically <laughs> looking at the ceiling. And I was like, well, I, I don't know if I can chill. And then Siobhan was like, I have to go max and try to make it. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah. I, I feel like it's not fair for Sarah to say, yeah. Oh, just chill the first one. It's like, well, not everyone's Sarah shows. I'm like, I cannot chill. <laughs> <laughs> I, won't make it. I wish I could though. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I think everyone aspires to, to be able to chill the first one. Yeah. <laughs> That's the goal, I guess. Um, so, so you get, you get definitely more sprint events in your lineup and your repertoire this season. Did, have you ever seen yourself as a sprinter? Have you always been a middle distance swimmer? Um, I always wanted to be a sprinter, but I always been good at middle distance. So I guess I was like put into that box really early on when I was a kid. Cause I was like doing all the races mm -hmm. and I feel like 
the easiest one when you're good it's like the middle distance ones because right. it's less packed yeah. so i just yeah. really got pushed into that box and which i didn't mind for a while but i've I've done my mileage and like I've done a bunch of two flies, a bunch of four AMs and four hundred free and I've trained for that. And I just like as I'm getting older, I just want to do like a bit less mileage and like have more fun and do more sprint stuff. And it seems to be working quite well. So I'm happy with it. So yeah, it's nice to have the option, I'd say. Certainly. Did yeah. th- coming into this third season, do you feel like you just mentally you have a better uh, grasp on how to approach these, these races, especially multiple races when like one's a 200 and then one's a 50. I'm always amazed at backstrokers on day one that do 200. And then I don't, was it 30, 40 minutes later, you have the 50 back. Yeah. And before that, in the middle of that, I had two, I am so. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and relay. So yeah, first day was always four races. So it was quite busy. It was like two back two I am 50 back four round one medley. So big day. Yeah, but it was fun. Like I'm used to do races back to back because like even, okay. So when I was uh, still training with Tom, uh, that was like back in like 2016, 2017, 2018. And uh, in Canada, well, yeah, in Canada to start with some meets, like small club meets. Mm-hmm. And he would make me do all the races of the meet. <laughs> Like, you're, you're not like, exaggerating just every no, race like every race so four races i can deal <laughs> i've done it and i've worked on it so like this is actually like the perfect setting for me to just like keep on going and it's nice because i don't really focus on like oh my gosh i have four races it's more like hey just do do one do the job warm down mm-hmm. onto the next one and i don't like even when I warm up, like I think about the 200 back and then it's like, okay, it's done, warm down. Okay. Now it's 2 a.m. Like I don't let myself think about the other races and like, oh my gosh, that's going to be hard at the end. Like my last 35 meters in the four bar one medley is going to be painful. It's like, no, okay. Back to business. And then you get up on the block and you start to race again. So did swimming every event at a club meet, did that help you with that? Um, yes, because I was hurting while I was doing them, but I couldn't manage. So I was like, I know it's a bit different from like club swimming to ISL, like the level sure. is a bit higher, but I feel like when you're used to do a bunch of races and I feel like it's probably the same in the U S with like NCAAs and stuff, like they do a lot of racing and stuff. So it probably helps them. Uh, I know it's different for a bunch of people from Europe, uh, in the energy, I remember in the first year, they were like, Oh, this is hard to like do races back to back. And I was like, Oh, it's fine. <laughs> and like a bunch of the U S kids were like, yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. So for sure it's different for some people, but I took advantage of it. So I'm kind of happy that I was able to do more than one. Yeah. So, so in these club meets, you know, yeah. would you, would you go all out in every race or would you, yeah. is, is there a certain, you know, it's like, if it's the 200 breast and it's not a loaded event, are you like, well, I can kind of cruise this one and still win and then go on to the next race. Um, no, I was always going max. Cause yeah, I like to do well. And mm-hmm. I, I'm not the type of person that's going to like chill one race. Cause it's easier. I just mm-hmm. like, my target is not really, well, it's not really the position, but it's mostly like my times and how I do the race and how I execute it. So I always try to like be the best that I can in every race, even though like by the end it was not pretty, but I was still like giving my max. Yeah. Were, were you the only one doing every event or were there yeah. other kids? <laughs> yes. And I remember like, uh, I was, <laughs> Uh, there was like this official and so basically it was it was <laughs> it was a small meet okay but so they would like do the race and then I would go get my medal put it on the block well on the like you know when they take their times on the table like the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. officials yeah mm-hmm. so I would put the medal there 
go warm down and then go back up again and then put the metal back then. And then the lady was just like, this is unfair. You're like stealing all the metals to our kids. And then I was like, I'm so sorry. Like I'm just doing what my coach told me to do. <laughs> I mean, also you're swimming every, it's not like, yeah, it's like, man, come on, lady. I know. I was like, I'm sorry. Also, you were what? 16, 17 at the time. Yeah. And it's not like you're, you know, you know, some adult just punishing yeah, these some, children. Like, 25 year old, like swimming against those like 15, 16 years old. I was like, I'm the same age. Okay. <laughs> No kidding, man. So, so this, this brings up uh, an interesting point, which was that Tom Rushton, who's now the yeah. head coach at energy standard, yeah. he was your coach in, in Montreal. Yes. Okay. Before yeah. in 2016, he was and- my coach starting in 2014. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So I knew him from way back then, <laughs> way back then. Um, yeah. when, when did you start swimming competitively? Uh, I started swimming Well, I pretty much when I was like six years old, okay. I started like right away competition. Cause like both of my parents were swimmers and I always like, mm. Oh, I want to be like you guys. And then I was like, always so excited to like be in the water and stuff. So I started like really young and even like competition, like I was already doing like hundred IMs at like eight years old. So yeah. Wow. Like, okay. I started. So- so you were a natural. Was was there a point for you when it really clicked when you were like, okay, I want to, I want to do this at like the highest level possible. Okay. Funny thing is, um, I was pretty talented when I was younger. Mm-hmm. So, um, like I was in a 400 free and I'd be like a hundred meter ahead of everyone. And, um, everyone kind of like noticed me so it was kind of cool but at the same time it was kind of hard so like every time I was having like a hard race everyone would judge and stuff like that so it was it was pretty hard for me as a young kid but um I'd say like around nine years old nine or ten uh back when I was swimming in Trois Rivières it's like a small city and uh, they did a whole article on me in the papers and it was basically like the title was like I want to go to the Olympics and like, that was when I was nine years old and I was always already seeing myself like making it at Olympics. And like, that was what I was striving for. And I remember like uh, a couple months ago, my mom showed me that before trials and then like to actually make the Olympic teams, like, I don't know, 10 years later or so, 12 years later, it's kind of crazy that it actually happened, but it was not an easy road. There was definitely some ups and downs, but to finally like, look at this and say like, Oh, like Mary from like when she was nine would be proud of her now. Like, yeah, it's kind of cool. I, I love that the whole time you're telling this story, you're using your hands and like, you yeah. can see the, you can see the rings. Oh, well, yes. that, you can see your tattoo <laughs> on your wrist of the Olympic rings that yes. you, you, you earned now. It's like, <laughs> you, you, there's the proof. <laughs> that's, that's, that's super cool. Uh, so so, so I'm going to get to trials and, and Olympics in a minute, but, uh, back to Tom Russian. So you, you, you started swimming with Tom in 2014 Yeah. in 2017, when he moved to energy standard in Turkey before, before ISL, when, when it was just a club team, uh, you went with him. Yes. And, yes. and you were 17 at the time. Yeah, I was 17, moved to Turkey to a whole different country. So that was a bit crazy. How, but, um, first of all, like, how are your parents? So, or how did, how did they like check the box on this one? <laughs> You're like, oh, it's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, like both of my parents, I'm really lucky. They're really supportive of my swimming career and stuff. So uh, for sure, it was a conversation I had to have with them to like ask, like, is it okay? And uh, for sure, I had to like come back a lot. So it was basically because I was still in school while I was there. So basically, I had to do three weeks in Turkey and then two weeks at home. So I did that for a year and a half. Yeah. And yeah, a lot of travel. It's a lot of travel. And especially there's no direct flight from Montreal to (laughs) Belek. Like, no. So I always had like these crazy train uh, plane schedule it was like going this this 
three stops. So it was always like really long travel day. So uh, that's one of the reason why a year and a half after I started with them, I kind of stopped because it was a bit hard for me considering I was the only one from North America. I feel like it was easier for people in Europe because it's just like two hour plane and then begin back home. But for me, it was like, no, no, a whole journey, <laughs> a whole day of traveling and like six hour time difference. So yeah, after a year and a half, I was like, okay, time to get back home, back to reality. But uh, during my time there, it was crazy. I remember I was like 17 and I was like, first practice, Sarah and Chad were there. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm training with them. Like, they're really good. I'm like, in my head, I was like, I'm average. They're really good. Like, what am I doing here? But I think it really gave me confidence because um, while I was training, I, I was doing like really good and I was trying really hard. And then to actually be able to like keep up with them and race them and practice, it gave me confidence that like, oh, like, I'm not that bad. And like, i deserve maybe to be on teams and stuff maybe like I'm good enough to make it and it really helped my confidence because uh I didn't really know where I was at in the world and stuff like that so it really gave me a boost to keep pushing and keep swimming basically uh what month of 2017 did you start that process uh it was like right after our trial so it was in May, I think. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Which you, so to give some context, you, it was right, right after world champ trials, which yeah. you made world champs in the 200 free, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And the four I am. And the four I am. Okay. Yeah. So you had two events or it, it, and this was going to be your first world champs, right? Yeah. That was my first senior team. Were you, were you kind of nervous at all about like switching training locations right before? Um, I wasn't really nervous because I was still with my coach. So that was like the main thing. So basically they closed the national center right after our trials. Mm. So that's where I was training. I was training. There was a national center in Montreal back then, but then they closed it like right after our trials. So I didn't want it to change coach between trials and world championships. Like it wouldn't have made sense. And we were just trying to find a place to keep swimming and for him to keep coaching me. So that's, when he tried to talk to James and that's how it happened. So James was like, yeah, we can help you out for like three months, the world championships, you'll have a place to train and no problem and stuff like that. And then, yeah. So the plan at first was only for me to be there for that three months, Mm -hmm. but then they saw me train, they saw me race and they really liked how, I was in training and how I was racing and like my energy and stuff. So at the end of that three months, they were like, well, if you want to stay with us, like we want you. And I was like, Oh, okay. This is cool. I can get used to this. And then that's when I had my conversation with my mom and I was like, well, they want me to stay. (laughs) (laughs) That's how it happened. Yeah. That's so cool. I mean, especially for it to be a 17 year old kid and to have, I mean, that's, but wow. So, so then uh, world championships, your first inter- yeah. it's senior international team with, with team Canada, uh, yeah. you, you train an energy standard for a few months and then two free four I am, uh, h- how did that experience go for you? Big flop. <laughs> <laughs> Terribly. It went, it, it went horribly, but you know what? Like, oh, I also summed the 400 free. Yeah, I forgot about that one too. Oh my god! Um, yeah, I remember because four and three was my first event, and I remember because I think Katie Ledecky was in my heat in the in the morning, and I was in lane eight. The girl in lane seven didn't show up, so I had an empty lane, okay. and then everyone like started screaming because Katie was in the heat, mm-hmm. and I just remember like walking out and looking at the stand. And I couldn't even see the top. There was too many people. <laughs> I was like, okay, like <laughs> that's like that's what world champ looks like. Okay, so um, I did like ride on my best time, uh, my best time in the four hundred freak. Uh, almost made the final. I think I came eleventh. 
So like I was happy with it because it was not like my main event. So I was like, I'll take it. Uh, then I got sick during mm -hmm. the meet. So it was not really ideal, but did okay. The 203, like managed to do the semifinal. Mm -hmm. And then uh, four by 203, I think we came eight. So it was okay. It was a bit hard after the girls came third in Rio. But like our team was really young. I think it was me, Kyla and Rebecca and Mackenzie. And it was like all four of us. It was our first senior team. So like considering I was like the oldest one at 18, I think <laughs> we did pretty good. Yeah, um, I'm kidding. <laughs> so yeah. And then the 4am didn't really go super well because I was a bit too sick that day. But it was still like a good experience to have and like experience it the first time and then I was like okay this is how it goes like ready for I think it was just to get more experience like I didn't really have too high expectations it was just like try to take it all in and get better for the next years okay let's be fair that that doesn't really sound like a flop I mean that sounds <laughs> like as an 18 year old kid you did pretty dang good for your first international meet <laughs> oh thanks <laughs> Um, so, so, so you get that experience and then I like, I have to imagine that, uh, after this meet, you head back to energy standard, take the swimming equation out of it. You're an 18 year old kid ha hanging with, you know, the, all, all these pro athletes, all these 20 something pro athletes, like on your own in a different country. Yeah. Was, how, like, was that exhilarating for you? Was that nerve wracking? Was that hard? It was all of it. Like. I remember like it was at first it was just like pure fun because I was like I'm training with the best in the world like how lucky I am to be there like people would kill to be at my place but at the same time it was also like super hard because like like you said like I'm an 18 year old kid who's like away from her family there's only two girls on our team uh, my first language is French and no one speaks French. I have to speak English all the time. And yes, my English is fine, <laughs> but like it was still like a bit of an adjustment. And when I would get tired, like sometimes I would like try to research my world. I'd be like, oh, so like that was hard. And like the six hour time difference, being at school, being the only one that was do doing mm -hmm. school there. And um, so, yeah, it was a bit hard on that perspective also. So I think I got like all the emotions. Like I would cry sometimes because I was like, oh, I miss home. But then at the same time, some weeks I'd be like so thankful to be there. So it was definitely good and I don't regret it, but I think it was good for me to only do a year and a half and come back home after. That, that seems to make sense. That's, I mean, yeah, it sounds like a lot. <laughs> yeah. Like everyone would just see like the pretty pictures and be like, oh, you're so lucky. But like trying to explain like doing this for a year and a half is like, it, it was draining. It was hard and it helped me in my swimming and I'm thankful for it. And like, it gave me the push I needed, I think at that time. But at the same time, like after a year and a half, I, I had to go back home and like work on being at home and being my, with my family and being with my friends and like actually live a normal life. <laughs> sure thing. I mean, it's a, yeah. I, one more question I have on that is that were there, did you pretty much only stick to your training group and that's kind of the only people you interacted with or were there? Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so were there people, were there people within that group that you felt like you could really relate to again, just being an 18 year old kid and them not really being in the same peer group as you? Um, well, okay. So the, so Sarah and Chad would like come and go most of the time. Like mm -hmm. they wouldn't be there like based in Turkey. Um, so it was basically me, Georgia, Ben, Krager, at one point, it was just like the four of us that would speak English and uh, some Russians guys. So they would like stick with them. And then it was basically like the four or five of us. So, yeah, it was hard because like I love Georgia to death, but like she's 10 years older than me. So she's basically my big sister. So like she could relate, but not really 
because she had like she was 18 back home and it was kind of hard to fit but like I was really thankful that like everyone got along super well and it was like a really small family but yeah like in the city I think in Bellic when it's the off season, I think there's like 500 people that lives there. So it's a really small city. Wow. Yeah. There's like stray dogs and chicken that walk <laughs> in the streets. So it's not really big. Wow. This is, this is context. I had no idea about <laughs> <laughs> you see, you, like you said, when, uh, when people post about training and injury standard, yeah. you just see pictures of Gloria and you're like, wow, this is beautiful. To be fair. It's like, the facilities are just amazing but yeah like as soon as you step outside of it it's just like oh, okay there's not much <laughs> wow okay uh so so yeah so you um do a year and a half in training and energy standard you come yeah. back and then how soon is it after that where they're like hey isl's happening come be oh on our team gosh. well uh so i came back one of the main reasons was uh, I got injured okay. so I got four tendonitis internal and external of both shoulders yeah it got to a oh, point where no. like lifting my fork I was crying because it was too painful so uh basically I had to stop for like six seven months yeah that's a long time yeah so basically like after Commonwealth Games in I think it was April 2018 okay yeah, I didn't start again till December 2018. Okay. Wow. So yeah. So at that point, I like, didn't even know like if dead I would... stop. You were out of the yeah. water for yeah. seven, eight months. Yeah. And to be fair, I was like not in a good place mentally and physically. So um, I didn't even know if I would keep swimming. Like I was that close to hang my goggles and be like, I'm done with this. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I try to think about like the little Mary that was like, oh, I want to go to the Olympics and stuff. And I was like, you know what? Like there's two more years. I'm going to try and then see how it goes. And yeah, started fresh with a new club. And then, uh, 2019, I was not expecting a lot because I was coming from far far away so I was yeah. like oh, I don't know how it's gonna go and then I decided to focus on the two fly which was a new event for me and then at trials I surprised myself by winning and qualifying for Pan Ams and like that was a really cool surprise because I was not putting any pressure on me and I think no one saw it coming and not even me and not even my coach I we were like okay let's take it <laughs> um so yeah after uh I think it was in August, Pan Ams. Yeah, so in August, went to Pan Ams, had a bunch of races, uh, got four medals. So I was really pleased with that. And then I was like, okay, maybe like I still got a shot at like making my dreams and stuff. And then COVID happened. So that was kind of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so it ended up being okay because I did make the team. So that was good. But yeah, definitely lots of ups and downs uh, since Turkey. Yeah. So when you got your tendonitis, yeah, um, you you said you weren't in a good place mentally, you weren't in a good place physically. Yeah. Was that ba solely based on the injury, or do you feel like that was just because you had spent a year and a half going back and forth, and then you got injured? Were were, were there things kind of piling up at that point? Oh yes. hundred percent. I think it was just like, you know, at first when you leave for like a month and then like you come back home and then your friends tell you stories of like, Oh, this happened, this happened, that happened. And even with your family, like birthdays and stuff. And like, it just starts to accumulate. And then at one point you're just not part of the stories and you're just not there for the families, the dinner parties and stuff like that. And after a year and a half, it's just like, you lose so many people. And I just felt so alone and so isolated. And then you add this of me being injured and not being able to do the only thing I was supposed to do there. It was just 
horrible it was so hard and uh so yeah I started depression and I was like I don't want to train anymore I don't I can't train and I couldn't really talk to anyone because I was just so far away and isolated so it was just like I think it was just the everything yeah so then through that eight months did you feel like your your life came back to you no (laughs) I I was just I was I was like, I'm so sick of swimming. And I remember like Swimming Canada was sending me a bunch of email and energy was sending me emails like what's going on and stuff like that. And I was just like blocking everyone. I was like, I need to just step away for a little while and just like focus on myself because this is not working. And I always say like a happy swimmer is a fast swimmer and I was not a happy swimmer. So I just like, I needed to just find my happiness again. Yeah. So, so then you, you take that time outside of the pool and and how did you find your happiness again? Um, by swimming, which is kind of weird. (laughs) I I thought that like from like staying away from the pool, it would make me happier, but then I went back into the water and it was hard at first, but then I realized that like, that's my first love. Like I like to swim and I swim because I like it. And I, didn't accomplish what I wanted to. So that's why I kept going and that's why I pushed through it. Yeah. So, so let's talk about, uh, you know, 2019 is kind of a surprisingly good year. And then, like you said, COVID happened. It was shit for, for, for you. I think it was shit for everyone, but, uh, but then, you know, you obviously made it (laughs) to trials. Um, so I want to back it up a little bit, (laughs) excuse me, 2016, Yes. Did you go to trials uh, then for Canada? Yes. Can you tell me about that experience? It was bad. <laughs> um, so I was 16, uh, but back in 2015 at World Junior Championships, I think I came second in 2IM, and I actually did the fastest time in Canada, even though I was 16. I went 212. So uh, in Quebec, there's not a lot of swimmers, so I had a lot of media attention of like, you're the fastest swimmer ranked in the two I am. Like, do you think you can make it? Then like, Oh, like they, they put all of their basket on me and saying basically like, Oh, like she's going to make the team, uh, blah, 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 blah. And I think I was just like, not ready for that. So basically two I am, uh, in the morning, big flop, didn't even qualify for the a final. And I remember like two seconds later, like the guy from the interview was like, so, how does it feel to have to wait for four more years? And I was like, I was 16 and I was like, oh, it's okay. And then I, I remember coming back and then like crying and I was like, oh my gosh, like I couldn't handle that much pressure, but definitely like, uh, it was a lot of work, but now I'm okay with it. And I've had the same thing in for Tokyo and I was ready and I was prepared. So that was good. Did, did you swim other events at, at 2016? Uh, yes, I did two. I am four. I am two free four free two fly. No, not to fly two breasts. Uh, yeah, I do a bunch of events. <laughs> did, <laughs> did, uh, did they, <laughs> how did the rest of them go? Um, my main focus was 2 IM. Uh, I did the final and the 4 IM. I think I came eight. So it was not the best meet, but it was okay. Gotcha. So, so yeah. So then flash forward 2000, 2021, you finally make it after yes. COVID, COVID postpones it a year. And then the meet gets postponed like two more times after that. And it's like, it's an invite only. <laughs> I know. I feel like you guys, this trials was like, the the worst just in it terms of like so is it gonna happen i know like every time they kept pushing it farther and farther away and we kept having like zoom calls with like the procedure and how it's gonna go and how crazy it's gonna be and i was like jesus christ just make them happen <sighs> so, yeah yeah and so so you finally get to get there uh what yeah. was your event lineup heading into the meet um so uh funny thing well I just started doing backstroke like this year. Okay. So yeah, I was like, I want to do backstroke. So I did the hundred back, two, four free, 
to fly am to fly. So many <laughs> <minutes. laughs> Yeah. So okay. that's the end. See, so you had, you had a lot of racing, <laughs> yeah. um, just, just, you know, because of, we were coming off the, of the COVID year, um, and everyone's training situation was so different. Did you feel, you know, like you were in good shape to, to swim that many races? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I thought I would, I was, uh, then I actually didn't, well, I personally wasn't happy with my swimming at trials, mm-hmm. which is kind of funny because I qualified for the team, but, uh, I was not happy. Like I wanted to have individual swims and I was expecting more. And I think my coach was expecting more too. So I was kind of disappointed, but at the end of the day, I make the team and that was like my goal. So I can't really be mad about that. So I just, I took it and I was like, Oh, you know what? Like it's the first experience we'll take it. But yeah, like had a bunch of races. It was hard. It was fun. (laughs) What, what, where did the two free fall in, in the event lineup? So like when, you know, when, when in the meet did you end up making the team? Um, okay. So I think, okay. First day was hundred back, 400 free. That was hard. So I was, yeah, I was putting a lot of hopes on my hundred back because in practice I was like practicing a lot, even though like, cause in Canada, that's the easiest event to make it. I know. I don't know why I want to do backstroke, but I really like it. And my coach was like, why? Like, you can do who I am and you'll be chill. And I was like, I want to do 100, 200 back. So, yes. Yeah. So, basically, uh, I was putting a lot of hopes on my 100 back and then didn't go quite as well as I thought I would. So, I think I, I came third or fourth. So, it was, like, really close. Got on third to Fina A, but just didn't go in the top two. So I was, it was kind of hard. And then I had to do 400 free, like 20 minutes after. Um, I tried to chill the first hundred and then see where I was at after hundred, see if I would like push it or just chill. And then after a hundred, I was so far behind. I was like, I'm just going to warm down because I don't want to try. <laughs> so yeah, maybe I should have swam that 400 free, but I just, why not? Um, I think the two free was like second or third day. But the thing is like, I didn't know until the last day because I came fifth in the two free. Mm -hmm. And it was like, maybe you're going to make it, maybe not, like depending on like how people are going to go and stuff like that. So I actually had to wait till the meet was over to know if I would make the team or not. And like, even like I left the competition and I was like crying because I thought I didn't make it. And then we were having dinner with our coaches and stuff. And then I got a call and then it was like, hey, Mary. And I was like, hi. <laughs> um, so we had a meeting and I just wanted to let you know that um, you can pack your suitcases because you're coming to Tokyo. And I remember like, I was like, oh my gosh, okay. So I was really happy and that was a nice surprise because it was stressful. Like the whole week, I couldn't like be happy because yeah. like, oh, I made it. And then I couldn't be sad because I was like, maybe I did. And it was just like so stressful for like the whole week. But then to like have that relief at the end was really, it was really nice. And it was nice too, because Kat, I trained with uh, Katrin Savar mm-hmm. and that we both make the team and we both made it in the four by two. So that was like really fun that we could actually do the four by two together in Tokyo. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, what a whirlwind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know there were a few cases like that at our trials where um, I think Brooke 40, who was sixth in the tuner free was in the same boat. She had to wait until yeah. the very last day. It's and successful. so like people were like congratulating me and then I was like I can't be happy but then at the same time it's like thank you and then it's just like <laughs> I don't know so yeah D- did you swim the rest of your event lineup after that yes okay how did how did how do you feel like those events went within the rest of the week especially knowing that like you maybe yeah. made it and well, maybe like, didn't I, th- I think I, I came fourth in like four races and fifth in a two free. So like, I was always like right there, but not there yet. So I, I, every time I was touching the wall, I was like, 
like it's not what I was working for and then like it's fine like people would be like you did four races that you were in top four that's pretty good and I was like yeah but like I want to be in a top two <laughs> so it was okay but it was not like what I was strike striking for so fair enough and then so you get the call you're going to Tokyo yeah you go to Tokyo yeah. Uh, did you feel prepared? You know, you, you had been to lots of international meets. You'd been yeah. to Commonwealth games, which is it, which is a legit games. You'd been to world championships. You'd been to Pan American games. Again, another legit games. Did you feel prepared just for the scale uh, of the Olympics and, and what, what a games like that entails? Yes, I think I was. Yeah, I, I was. Cause even though I'm still like 22, I feel like I've been around for a while. So like, it's kind of funny like I've been around for a while but like not a lot of people know me <laughs> and I have a funny story after that but um anyway so yeah I've been around so I'm kind of used to it and I tried not to get overwhelmed because I did get overwhelmed back in 2017 and then I was not focused after so then I'm like okay now just do your thing like you're used to it just focus on you and then it's going to be fine uh so, so then, you know, you, you swim prelims of the four by two. Yeah. Um, did you, did you feel prepared, especially knowing like, okay, I'm going here and I'm only swimming 200 free. Yeah. So like kind of in the lead up, I'm guessing you did a little more specified work and then, yeah. and then heading in, you know, how, how did you yeah. feel about your swim? So, okay. So basically, cause I do like all of these races, right. <laughs> I train pretty much everything. So like my coach was basically like, oh, like today you're going to join the sprinters and then, oh, you're going to do I am and then you're going to do distance freestyle and then you're going to do breaststroke. Oh, it's been a while. You haven't done fly. So you're going to do fly set. So I'm just like all over the place. And then I realized after trials, like I only qualified for the 200 free. And then they told me I was uh, maybe going to swim the four bar one medley and backstroke in the morning. So then I only focused on like backstroke and freestyle till like trials to Tokyo so it was basically like what two months um but yeah it was just like I was focusing on this and training and I knew what I was doing so when it says like best stroke I knew I was I would do backstroke it's not like asking my coach like oh what do I do today and he'd be like oh let's do breaststroke and I knew what I was doing and I actually I loved it I was like this is so much fun like I love to just focus on this and actually see a difference from like every practice because I was doing everything it was hard to see like a quick progression because it's just like okay but then after two months I was like so much better in my freestyle and backstroke and I was like okay like I can get used to this and I actually liked it so that's when I like after Tokyo I was like I'm going to focus on backstroke and freestyle and that's going to be it. <laughs> I'm retiring from the 4 a.m., the 400 free and the two fly. Don't want to do them anymore. And my coach was like, okay. <laughs> done and done. Yeah. Clean cut. That's great. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so, so uh, yeah, I mean, you, you have, you have specified training heading into Tokyo. How do you yeah. feel? How did you feel about your swim in Tokyo? Uh, I did my best split since 2017, since my best time. Okay. So like, I was really pleased with that, like 157 low. I was like, yeah, I can take it. Then I think like with just two months of just training freestyle, I got excited of like, what can I do the next year after a year and a half? And I think it's like exciting for the future to actually know what I'm doing and like have a really clear vision of like, what are my races and focus on them instead of like trying to focus on everything and just get by, by being fourth and trying to make it. So I'm really looking forward to like, even our next trials and even I know like I'm excited. The, I feel like this gives context to, uh, to your, your regular season in, in season three ISL as well, yeah. which is, which, which is great. Okay. You said you had a funny story. Oh, yes. So basically, I'm not going to say names, but um, I was on a plane with one of the team manager from a team of ISL. Uh -huh. And then the person was like, oh, like, are you excited? Is it your first season? 
And then I was like, um, no, it's my third one. <laughs> and then the person was like, oh, like, how's the draft? Do you like your new team? And then I was like, no, like energy standard kept me. Like I was with them since the first season. And they were like, oh, really? Well, good luck. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> I know I don't make a bunch of points, but I was like, okay. And then by the end of the season, like it was kind of nice to actually be acknowledged and be like, oh yeah, she's been doing good. <laughs> Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Listen, I didn't score a lot, but I did swim the most yeah. meters <laughs> in season one. <laughs> season. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah. So, so, so you you wrecked it in season three. You guys made it through uh, <laughs> through undefeated. Um, yeah. What's the next month look like for you? And, and how are you feeling about the playoffs? Um, so basically now it's back to training. Um, I took a week off. So basically I stayed in Italy for like four days and then I'm having the weekend off at home with my family and then starting training again on Monday. And then it's just going to be like getting back into shape, which is, which is kind of funny because I'm like, I'm in shape still, but, uh, no, try to get better and like work a bit on some details. Cause I, some races I know I can improve a lot and I need to work on some details because yeah, sprints, you really need to be good on your details. And like, I feel like 4am I could get by, but 50 back and 100 I am, I can't really. So I really need to work on my finishes and like some technical stuff. So definitely going to put a focus on that, but yeah, basically a month of training and then Eindhoven, which I'm really excited for. I think our team is I think our team is doing really good um considering that we're still missing quite a few people and from those people they're they're pretty good like <laughs> a couple of olympic medals and stuff like that so um that'd be good if they can join us in Eindhoven and um yeah I think our team is just going to get better and better and to actually come away from the it's not a playoff like the regular season undefeated I think it's gives us a momentum and I'm quite excited. Like I feel confident in our team and I feel confident in everyone and the atmosphere. It's just so great. It's so much fun. I love ISL. It's just so much fun to actually get to know your competitor. It's, it's so different. Like usually you go into world championships and you know them from like racing them a little bit, but you actually get to know them and they become friends. And it's just so much better. So, yeah. Is, is there any personality on the energy standard team that surprised you from just seeing them race to actually getting to know them? <laughs> um, I think everyone is just like, uh, I'm kind of the weird one. I, I'm always like, Woo! and it, even in the ready room, like I talked to like all the officials and like they were teaching me Italians in the ready room. And I was taking pictures with them. I was like, okay, like teach me. Every time I was doing a race, they, they would like know me. They were like, Mary. And then I was like, okay, like I need to learn a new Italian world. Every time I was racing. So then I was coming back in the ready room. They were like, okay, let's do a test. And then it would like question me. <laughs> so like try to make it. But uh, yeah, so, but like everyone is a bit different, but I think like, even like Clement, she, he's really funny. He's really funny. At first I was like, ooh, like all the Russian, they seem like really quiet and like really serious, but he's a funny one. Um, Chad is always joking around like Georgia. She's more calm in the red room, but she's super fun outside of the pool. And I, I think like everyone's personality, it's just so nice to actually get to know them instead of just like in the red room where like everyone is just like this. Right. <laughs> Some people are crazy, but not a lot. But uh, yeah, from doing backstroke, I think backstroke is the best crowd in the ready room. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I like uh, the why They're is that? Okay. I, I think like, okay, so the I, well, I am is pretty fun too. Um, but like freestyle, everyone is like super focused. And I'm like, okay, backstroke <laughs> is the most chill one. It's fun. Like I talk to everyone and we're joking around. So that's kind of fun. 
and I am is a bit like backstroke, but it's still more serious. Like I'd be like, Hey, good luck ladies. And then like one people would fly like, thanks. And then the rest would just be like, no. <laughs> um, so, so obviously there's, you know, we, we explained why you're on energy standard ISL, you know, it, it it's a pro league that every, every people from different countries are on all kinds of different teams. Does anyone ever tease you? Cause you're not on Toronto. <laughs> do, do your Canadian teammates are like, mm, traitor. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I got, I actually, I got asked in season two if I wanted to go with Toronto mm -hmm. and then I decided to stay with energy just cause I know the coaches, like I, I know, I know the coaches from Toronto as well. Cause they're on the Canadian teams, <laughs> but, um, it just, I know Tom, like he's been my coach since like 2014 and I was with everyone, uh, for like a year and a half and then just being with them season one, season two, season three, like, it's just like, we're a little family and I just want to stay with them and it's just super fun. So, yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. I, 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 I was just curious, just <laughs> talking about yeah. the ready room. I was thinking, I was thinking backstroke. It's like, oh, she's in there with Kylie, you know, it's like, is, is, oh, <laughs> is no, Kylie ever, fun. ever po poker about it? <laughs> well, well, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't do backstroke if I was in Toronto because Lisa and <laughs> Kylie, they're just like so fast. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, so the next month you're, you're just, you're at home, you're training. Um, last, last question. Yeah. Uh, you were in Naples for five or six weeks yeah. apart from the racing outside of the pool. I, I kept seeing great pictures from everyone, you know, obviously taking, taking little day trips, taking side tours. Yeah. What was the, what was the best thing you did in Naples? Uh, best thing, uh, while we were still racing, uh, I think I planned a trip to Positano with me and two other girls. I like to plan stuff. So I'm like the team manager of the swimmers in our group. So it's kind of funny. So I planned like the whole trip, like ferry to get there and stuff like that. And like, we slept there actually, and then did a boat tour and it was super fun. So it was nice actually to do to actually visit the city because most of the time when we're racing like at world championships and stuff we don't have time to visit any places like every time i would travel the people would be like oh how was dubai and i was like well the pool was cool and that's pretty much the whole thing i saw like that's it then they're like oh okay and they're like oh you get to visit so many places and i'm like no i get to visit so many pools <laughs> so it, it's nice to actually be able to visit the city and enjoy what it has to offer. So that was cool. Nice. That, that, I think that's one unique thing about, you know, th at least this season, I guess last season, you probably didn't get to see any. Oh yeah. Past, we're in the bubble. <laughs> in the bubble. <laughs> right. Included island. <laughs> <laughs> but at least this season, you know, you yeah, actually got that. to travel somewhere nice yeah. and see the city. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Mary, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. I really appreciate you taking the time Thank to sit down and chat. Invite. Absolutely. Um, any parting thoughts for our audience before we sign off today? Um, no, well, thank you for following along and, uh, it'll be good in the semis and the final. <laughs> what, what, is, what, what's this? Is this the energy sign? Yeah. Yeah. She's got the energy standard tattoo. I got it after the final in Vegas in 2013 <laughs> with two other swimmers. <laughs> That's awesome. Which is kind of funny because one of them is with Aqua now. <laughs> <laughs> That's that that is hilarious. But but you know, to, if you win it, if you're you're an if you're an ISL champion once, you're an ISL champion for life. Yes. <laughs> DC. <laughs> <laughs>